In this video, we will look at Business Process Model and Notation, also known as BPMN 2.0. BPMN 2.0 helps stakeholders to understand a specific process by showing the working steps from start to finish. To model a BPMN process, you need different types of objects. Events to start and finish processes, activities to show the working steps, gateways to split and merge process flows, connecting objects to connect all those elements, different artifacts and finally pools and lanes to show who is conducting the process steps. The first flow objects are events. Events are represented by circles. There are three types of events, start, intermediate and end event. A start event is represented by a circle with a thin border. An intermediate event has a double border made of two circles. End events are depicted by a thick border. Events are triggers to start, modify or complete a process. Let's look at an example. The start event triggers the sequence flow of the process. A state that occurs during process execution is represented as an intermediate event. The flow will only continue when the event has occurred. The end event indicates that the process is finished. Tips and tricks. Please note, the name of an event is always formed by at least a noun and a verb in passive. Sometimes, events may contain an icon to define the event trigger. For example, an envelope in the start event indicates that the process will start as soon as an email is received. This is not the only icon we may find, there are many more. Activities are the next type of flow objects we will take a look at. There are four main types of activities. Tasks, event-based subprocesses, transactions and calls. Activities are one of the main components of BPMN diagrams. They represent working steps performed by a person or system. While tasks are the more basic type of activity, you would use subprocesses for depicting more complex activities. They can be displayed in collapsed or expanded state. As with events, you can differentiate between various task types to define the character of the task more precisely. There are those that must be executed several times in succession, marked as loop, and multiple instances that must be executed several times in parallel, respectively in sequence. The last type of flow elements are gateways. These are represented by a diamond shape, including various icons. Gateways are used to split and merge process flows. They define conditions and determine which process path needs to be followed. BPMN 2.0 defines seven different types of gateways. In this video, we will just cover the four most commonly used. Let's start with exclusive gateways. Exclusive gateways indicate that just one condition or path is allowed. These are so-called exclusive decisions. They are used for process loops and returns. Parallel gateways come into action when all outgoing process paths must be followed. Only when all incoming paths are fulfilled, the process flow continues. Inclusive gateways are used when it is possible to follow one or multiple process paths. When merging, it is necessary to wait for the completion of all previously triggered paths. Tips and tricks. It is often recommended to model a task before an inclusive or exclusive gateway. The task indicates that a decision has to be made, which makes the process flow more understandable. In the case of event-based gateways, the sequence flow, the event of which occurs first in time, will be the one to be followed. Tips and tricks. Please note, since the completion of only one event is required in order to proceed, the split will be closed with an exclusive gateway. Connecting objects are lines that link the different elements. There are three types of connecting objects. The sequence flow is a solid line with an arrow at the end. It connects activities, 
events and gateways of a process with each other and shows in which order the process steps have to be executed. Besides the sequence flow, there's the conditional sequence flow. The conditional sequence flow follows all paths for which a defined condition can be applied. When splitting into several sequence flows, one of the sequence flows can be marked by a dash as the default flow. This way, dead ends can be avoided. Next is the message flow. This is a dashed line used for messages and the exchange of information with external process participants. They are triggered by activities and can dock onto other activities, pools or message events. The last connecting object is the so-called association. It shows the relationship between artifacts and flow objects. A pool is represented by a horizontal or vertical rectangle. Pools depict a company, a specific department or an IT system participating in a process at a higher level. A pool can contain one or more swim lanes. Lanes represent a subordinate role that is usually responsible for the execution of tasks. Tips and tricks. Please note, a diagram can contain several pools. Each pool represents a company, an IT system, an external actor or different departments. If a diagram contains multiple pools, it is called a BPMN collaboration diagram. Artifacts bring an additional level of detail to BPMN diagrams. We can divide artifacts into two groups, standard artifacts and additional artifacts. Under the category of standard artifacts, we will find data objects, groups and annotations. Data objects represent documents that are used in a process. This could be already existing data in the form of an input or data resulting from an activity, which would be depicted as an output. A group is a visual element that clusters objects that are related in content. This helps to understand the model but has no effect on the process flow. Annotations enable the modeler to explain a particularly complex part of the BPMN diagram, just like a little note. Under additional artifacts, we may find further artifacts developed by BPMN software developers to enhance the process. These can be, for example, roles, applications, standards, risks and controls. A role is a combination of the same areas of activity. Applications are IT systems that support the execution of process steps. Standards represent requirements for the process execution. These can be company guidelines or official international standards. Hazards that may occur during the execution of a process can be depicted as risks. Controls are regulatory guidelines to minimize those risks. Congrats! You've gotten to know the most important BPMN objects. With the help of events, activities and gateways, you can now model all necessary process steps. Connecting objects, pools and lanes help you to visualize who must perform tasks in which order. Standard and additional artifacts enrich your process by providing information such as which documents are needed and where risks may appear. You are eager to model your first BPMN diagrams yourself? Then register for our free trial version of Big Process Design. Start to improve your processes today.